Welcome back here to Central Coast Sporting and Recreation Complex in the heart of Tugra. Seen some ripping grand finals so far. Two already have transpired. Both of those have featured the Sydney Scorpions winning their respective matches in the 12 boys and 18 boys division. And they feature once more here in the 16 boys in the green and lime green outfits. James Preston and David Stone to bring you all the action here as the Hunter Western Hornets have first use of the ball and try and avenge for that last up loss. But a couple of crazy matches. If this one is even half as good, we're in for a treat. Yeah, and it's a, it's a bit of a mirror image. It's the same two teams going head to head in the 16s and the 18s, boys. And we're just getting our team list together here. So we'll do our best to notify what players are going and that's Fahim with the ball. So Jeros crossing halfway now. We do at least have the Scorpion side here as Saxon Gore pops it back on the inside and now it comes for Poli. They'll go at pace here. Gore through the middle. Tries to bat it on instead. Bats it into the next suburb and they have to collect that from Tascot. So they'll roll this one on the seven to restart. Yep. Jamming in from the sideline. Good touch made from Mickelraith. So now the Hunter Western Hornets come up towards halfway. They play it Nice and quick and the good drive here. They can really get moving in the right direction. Gore had to make that touch, David Stone. Yeah, he did have to make that touch or he would have been away here. And As it started, it's end to end straight away. But a repeat set here for the Hunter Western Hornets. And this will be a good chance for them to capitalise and put the first one on the board. So up they march now through the centre of the field and Gore makes the touch. A slow approach here from the Hunter Western Hornets. About eight away from the line. Once again, they look to threaten them. Coming out wide. Nearly there. Just couldn't quite find the opening there. I think that might be Noah Carlson hanging out wide in the 20 jersey for the Hornets. Yeah, he could be right there. And here we have the Scorpions. They've been good throughout this whole tournament, the Scorpions. And interesting to see both teams have already played each other. So dare say both coaching staff will have some notes in the book what they're going to run throughout this game. Last play now is Spooner is an option. So too through the middle, though, is Feltham. And Feltham is ultimately caught. So no change to the score sheet as of yet. Still nil all. They come up through the middle. A nice driving run here from the Hornets before hovering wide. I think there was an opportunity to run directly at Feltham there because he hadn't retreated the distance, but they were too single-mindedly focused on getting to this interchange area. And Mr. Pike's picked up a... No touch, I believe it could be, the signal was. So a good chance here for the Scorpions now to go from halfway. Clark floats it along the line. Actually finds its way out to Logan Toller. And now held in one hand here from Davies. They pop it to the middle, Jeros. Jeros crabbing across field. Berryman Duff there in support. Oh, was there a touch? I didn't think a touch was made, but they'll say play on here. Jeros, now Perry McDuff. Perry McDuff pops it short. The and they've actually oh, made the touch right at the death there. So a very important save from the middle there for the Hunter Western Hornets. I think he actually dropped it low over the line. Uh, the signal from the referee was ball down. So that was, that could have really opened up scoring early. So aggressive approach here in defence. The referee just saying, ease off a little bit, boys. But up they come now, the Hornets, and a nice pick up two out of acting half. They've got them backpedaling well read in defence, though, jamming in from out wide. Alex Mickelwraith makes a very good play. Some metres to pick up here. Now for the Sydney Scorpions. Two from two so far in the grand finals on our stadium field. Looking to make it three from three. That's not the way to go about it, though. Yeah, another early turnover. There's been a bit of turnover. It's funny the difference between your 18s boys that was just end to end to end. The 16s boys, it's a bit more, a bit more clunky, a bit more drop ball and that, and I'm sure the both coaches will want to clean that up. So the Hornets looking to pose first points here. Now play at seven away. Now inside the seven, good evasiveness there. Saxon Gore comes late and makes the touch. I thought the sweeper could have stepped back and dived himself there. I thought he had the defender. Uh, offside. So with around about five minutes of play having transpired so far, still neither side able to break the deadlock as the Scorpions float upfield and about ten shy of the halfway line. 
pop here from Fodu Moala. Good meters on the follow-up approach there from Mitchell as they keep driving forward. Now Feltham, Feltham puts down the foot. He's off for the prize here. They just get him in time. Mickle Wraith supplies for Clark to the middle. Spooner now in an acting half. They wrap around looking for Logan Tola. Tola is an option there. They keep it alive. How about the skills on that occasion? Doesn't amount to much in the end, but still lovely to watch. Yeah, skill sets of these young men. It's been on show all day throughout the whole tournament. The, the skill sets coming through these pathways at the moment is really high class. and Hopefully they throw through, flow through to our open systems in a few years' time. So about seven into enemy territory oh, now as they get away oh. from them. No spooners made the touch. That's the call. A diving effort. He must have just got fingertips on the boot laces. He was tiptoeing through that space there. I thought he was away. Here is Spooner now, though, with ball in hand. And then the follow-up run. Nearly losing his footing there was Davies, but picked up some decent meterage nonetheless. Berryman Duff now in an acting half on the last with a back pedaling defensive line. Jeros! Jeros! Way too good. Way too fast. Way too evasive. Finds the try line. The very good line there by Jarris. Just the lines that all of the players were running there for Berryman to come out of half. He had two or three options that he could have went to and he found the short one in Jarris. Punching through, unfortunately the cover defence couldn't make the touch and they go up 1-0. So finally the deadlock is broken here after about six and a half minutes of play. The Hunter Western Hornets, they have the work to do. Rain. Out of acting half, they float it across field. Mikkel Wraith is the man who knocks it down. And so the Scorpions can now work it away from their own end here. Very close to that sideline. They wait for the reinforcements to arrive. Eventually they get there, but not before they've lost a good 10 or so metres as Gore gets them in the right direction now. Gore once again, easy metres this time. Oh, the 17 straight through. Well, here he goes now, it's Thompson. Thompson looking for support. Fodu Moala's there. Try time for the Scorpions. They go back to back. It's 2-0. Thompson, we saw that there yesterday. The speed that he has off a back end, good, really good rucking set with Flo. He is very hard to stop out of dummy half. And he does have a set of wheels on him as well. Certainly does, and that now opens up a nice little lead here for the Scorpions. 2-0 early on in the contest. As they come forward. Cox plays it, seven away. Slowing it down, options to the inside and outside. Goes to the outside with Winter. They got across quickly, Jeros. Winter has another crack at them. Winter is approaching. He's also approaching the try line there. Just caught in the end. Cox at first receiver. Now Winter up against Berryman Duff. Winter again. Dummies comes through the line. Now were they onside? Yes, they just got there in time. Back to the seven metre they go. Cox fires from left to right. Brings it across here for Stone. Stone now with an option out wide. They've marked up well once more here. Very good defence from the Scorpions. Stone in at acting half, plays it for Winter. Now it comes to Cox, drops it off, eight away. Cox still an option, doesn't use him straight away. Goes through the line, it's French, popping it out wide. All and I clear. think we're gonna see a try here for Noah Carlson. Yeah, Who was, that the, was that the 14 in Stone going through from half? Showed a clean set of heels, but Carlson done well to get away from his wing defender and it's very hard very hard to go man on defence there. Normally we see like a cut line where the link will come behind the winger, but Carlson there done really well to get the ball down and, and finish it off for the Hornets. Well, game on here now in the 16 boys grand final. 2-1. Scorpions made a strong start and they might well have a bit more to say. Feltham, how about the sure pace do. on him? Feltham slams it down. Well, forget your Usain Bolt. It's all about Feltham. Wow, he just swept and I thought the defence had him covered, but the speed of the man, he, he just had them all ends up and dive for the line and takes a lead 2-1 to the Sydney Scorpions. So the Scorpions 
in a nice little position here. Third try of the match now through Feltham. 3-1 here with the Hunter Western Hornets with the ball in hand. Now, I will just point out I can have a little look on the stream here. It's going up in fours, and I can assure you we're not scoring in fours here in touch footy. <laughs> it is 3-1 the score. Floating a pass. Oh, beautifully disguised. I thought Feltham may have actually overran him there and not got the touch and perhaps mistimed it so that he made it before it arrived into the arms there of the Hornets player. But they'll say the touch is made. So Spooner spoons it off to an outside support, and up they go now. Just shy of that halfway line. That will help the Scorpions here. Yeah, that's a relieving penalty, and they'll get good field position here. And Mr. Pike... He's playing good advantage here. I like how he's he's letting it play, and if if the play's shut down, he blows his penalty, then I, I really like that style of refereeing. So here's a good chance here for the Scorpions. Thompson, Fodu Moala, and now Gore, all he wanted to play it inside the seven there. However, referee has pinged him for an incorrect play the ball prior to that. Quick pressure coming in from the Scorpions, but they promote the footy nicely here, the Hornets. A little pass at the advantage line. Able to pick up more and more meterage here. So play three, and they're already into enemy territory as they chime into the action here. A nice little run from White. White drops it down. Now Winter. Winter back to White. Winter picks it up from acting half. Looking for an opening. It's out wide. What a pass that is from Winter. But they managed to make the touch. It won't matter, though, because they've ruled it for it. Poor pass, but once again, they had it. What I think could be more effective there for the Hunter Western Hornets they're dumping the ball very close to the centre of the field. If they tried to drag the defending middle off centre, it would really create more space for them. Lines that there's link and the middle's running, but also open space for the winger to finish that try. Good metres here as well from Davies. As they come to the middle now with Lowe. Berryman Duff threatened to go long, played it short in the end for Jeros, but the touch pass is caught. So with about... 12 minutes gone, we're very much at that midway point in the match. Of course, no half-time break. We get 25 minutes straight, and the two sides changing ends when a try is scored. And at the moment, that try scoring tally looks at 3-1 in favour of the Scorpions. So, Hunter Western Hornets would very much love to be the next side to score as Brain has a little look at the defensive line. Nothing opening up as of yet. They tried for the draw and pass, but ultimately it goes to ground. Yeah, ball down there wasn't too much happening so this is where we can see the Hunter Western Hornets are really press hard here try and stop the rucking set of the Scorpions good touch so that's stop the flow on touch one touch two they'll go hard again oh, that's... Geros with a long floating pass it's a beautiful one actually it puts them right on the spot to have a quick and smooth transition and Jarris comes storming into them. I think that'll go against him. Yes, it will. Yeah. He ran directly at the opposition. Yeah, Jarris just pushed him away. So the penalty's gone against the attacking team there. It's a silly play from Jarris because he managed to open up oodles of space and done such a great job in the lead up. Undid all that hard work. So now the Hornets get good field position here through Bishop. And now Cox on the follow-up. Touch comes in from Clark. Cox. Slow but definitive in his approach. As he comes to the line, they float a pass. There was an option to pop it back on the inside, but I think the link had overrun him anyway. Yeah, the link did overrun there. I'd like to see him take off from that 4 3 platform and maybe hit the link a couple of times. Try and get the winger to shut down, which will create space for the winger later on in the game. It's a penalty here for the Scorpions with about 14 minutes gone in this one. They float the pass. Clark bringing it from right to left and now Logan Tola, good footwork from him. Spooner picks it up. Oh, that's definitely gone forward for mine. Play on is the call. Fodu Moala now on the follow-up. Gore drops it off here for a good run from Poli. Last play, Gore passive out the back for Poli. What a ball that is! Poli absolutely poleaxes the defence with a pass like that. And another try here for the Scorpions. No, they've called it back. Jeez, well... Maybe that's a bit of karma for the one on halfway, which certainly looks for, because I'm not sure that one was. We say the touch karma always evens itself out, and I think that could have been one. And now the Hornets, they get a relieving penalty, and here's a chance for them to go up the other end and counter. Strike a bit of counter-attack. So forward they march now. Pressure coming in there from Thompson. 
Touch is made on that occasion from Poli. Brain meets Gore in the middle of the field. Those two combine once again, but Gore didn't get back the required distance. It's a smart stuff there. In fact, you might even say a big brain play on that ah, occasion. He's using his brain, the young man. He's, he's done well to get that penalty there, giving his team a chance to score a try on repeat set. Good hands again. So Brain forced back to that seven metre mark after the touch. They've got options there with White. White to Brain again. White with a big dummy. Now all nearly coming up with the old school Shepherd. I didn't think he took full advantage there. No, he didn't. I... <laughs> Comes back to our question before. It's an interesting one where somebody from dummy half on a rooster can run the red rooster is what they call it, where you can run behind the, the lead runner. But then that's twice today I've seen a shepherd actually pulled up. So it's it's very interesting. You don't see too many of them in general in touch football. They usually let go. And that one, I felt he actually stopped on the run, realising what was about to unfold. Last play now. Gore with a no-look pass back through the middle. Trying to find Poli, and nearly did so. However, score remains at 3-1 with about nine to play. I think the Hornets, they have to be next to score to get themselves back into this game, James. If the Scorpions put one on them here, it could be all lights out. 3-1 with that two-try margin. Pretty low scoring so far Got as they it. pop it out the back. That's a beautiful pass. They've opened it up. They won't need to use the wing. Lovely little dummy at the death from Harry Lidbury in the Maitland product. Pulls one back. 3-2. Scorpions. The margin reduced. Yeah, they went to the, the old strike weapon of the old passive ball out the back. Created the two-on-one and the winger was trying to retreat, retreat to have his cover defenders help him out, but they just put one on him, so... They're back in it here, the Hornets, 3-2. Great conditions as well for grand final action. The sun has been out in full force, and it's really beaming down at the moment. So believe it or not, it actually begins to become a fatigue factor with how hot it is out here at Tugra. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit opposite to the prediction that they had for Oh, oh wow. Berryman, Duff, how smooth is that? Like butter, like silk, forget it. It's like smooshed berries, the berry man himself, Berryman Duff. Sets it up, try time for the Scorpions. Yeah, just nice interaction interaction pass between Berryman and also Jeros, but Jeros finishes it off. And that was very classy by both players there, but Berryman, he's a class act. He's got a long ball, but he's also got the nice finesse of short ball passing. He's got it all, Berryman tough. I'm pretty sure he's uh, fantastic at algebra as well. <laughs> they say he can do it all, that man. So about eight metres away, they put on the dummy here, the Hornets, having just pulled one back. Margin back to two once again. They float it to the middle here with White. White, again an option. They cut him out. Winter uses the passive play. Great read in defence, though, from Mikkel Wraith. Yeah, perfect, perfect win defence there by Mikkel Wraith. Read the passive out of the back, struck hard. And when he does come in and strike, the link's got to go around behind to cover him. So well done to young the winger in McElwraith there. Forceful touch called against the Hunter Western Hornets now, so a fresh set of six to start with here for the Scorpions in good field position. Clark pops it for Spooner, who takes easy metres on the offering. Clark, and now they're really running with free abandon here. Tola comes forward. Clark on the follow-up. Spooner plays it nine metres away. Picked up again from Clark. Thought better off having a crack at them. Instead goes back to that spot once more. Now he looks to launch. Clark having a Try crack. Time. Has the ball come free in the act of scoring? Or has Clark confirmed it? Yes, he has. He slams it down. And now this becomes a very difficult assignment here for the Hunter Western Hornets. Yeah, that whole defensive set, the, the young boys, they'll just roll and they weren't putting any defensive pressure on. And Clark there, got the defence retreating, got the quickie play, stepped back and dived and planted it down to blow the score out to a 5-2 scoreline at the moment. So Brain... Feeding it off here with about six minutes to go. They absolutely must be next to score. I don't think they can concede one either for the remainder of this match. Yeah, they've got to get a couple of stops here and, and put one on them. Here they come through McDonald. McDonald threatening, but no result coming here for the Hornets. So time is really becoming quite a large factor in proceedings. They float to the middle. Jeros is there. And now meters on the offering for Davies. 
popped up from the play the ball from Mitchell gets in at acting half a game linking up with Davies once more they head to the middle now with Jeros Berryman Duff picks it up. He's the man to watch. Dangerous as always. Berryman floating away. Pops the pass back against the grain. They just make the touch in time. The Hornets get away with one. Now they must launch the counter-attack though. Inside the final five minutes. Here good, they come. Good defence over there by the far winger in Carlson. Again, he's done some good things throughout this game. But he saved the Hornets a try there. Simpson out there now in the 24, gets up over halfway. Flat pass right at the advantage line. Cox turns it back on the inside. Simpson now on the last. They need a result here. Pass the play out the back now. Was that played it? Yes, it was. Micklewraith stepped up into the passing lane, and they'll get another set of six here. Yeah, what I'd like to see now, they've, they've set Micklewraith up here for passive plays. Set the winger flatter. Set the passive still so it's a decoy, but hit a big long flat balls to the winger. They should be able to get McAwaith coming in. Cox drops it down, sweeping around the back there, but Jeros makes the touch on a run there from Jalen Bishop. So Bishop goes back to the seven metre mark and he's played it in correctly. Ah, that's that's an hurt. absolute coach killer. Rob White will not be happy with that one. Yeah, that one that one will hurt him. So not long to go in the game. Hornets really need to hit the next, be the next ones to strike, but I think they've got the platform set. It's just whether they can go and execute that play. Well, really is now do or die. Last play to contend with here. The Scorpions can finish it off right now. Looking for support. They find it. They will win it. Saxon Gore. That is gorgeous. Oh, you pull one out there. You pull one out there, James. But there's the, the speed of Thompson again. That's the second time he's gone through from half. And I know I was taught as a very young man, if, if you see a dummy half run through the defensive line, that's obviously where the hole is. And young Gore there, he trailed him and got the ball and finished the try off. Well done to the Scorpions. That's a 6-2 scoreline now. You mentioned Saxon Gore finishing it off, and I think that might well finish off the Hornets too for this 16 boys grand final. We've only got about three minutes to play. The margin's four, so quite literally they won't have enough sets to do anything about this scoreline. They played inside the seven. They're crabbing across quickly. Advantage is played. They were offside. So back to that seven meter mark they go now. French gives it here for McKenzie. Slow approach, so they want to finish in fine form here. But the result is confirmed. And they That's just down. make the touch, do they? No, it has indeed been confirmed. Cooper McKenzie gets to ground. That's nice stuff from the Hornets. Yeah, just a quickie boy play there, and the defense was a little bit loose in the middle. Some gaps are opening up late in the game, and Hornets. Can they get a defensive stop or a quick turnover here to put a quick try on them? Make it exciting towards the back end of this grand final. So by our little watch here, which is, of course, just a rough guide for you, what you're seeing on the screen, not the official timepiece, which is perhaps why we had... A fair bit of confusion in the previous grand final. They're very much running out of time. Less than three to go. The margin still at three. Bearing some sort of intercept and then a calamity of errors from the Scorpions. Results done. Floating a pass over the top. And they get the touch in time. There was an opportunity to pop it back on the inside for Spooner. Never came his way though. So the Hornets see off another raid. Big dummy here. And good meters from McDonald. They pick it up and keep driving forward. Nice start to this set. Play three. They're into enemy territory. Clark makes the touch. Cox pops it back against the angle. Now they finally pick it up here on play four. Still working towards a, a nice shift out to this wide hand side. Carlson has open pasture. Turns back away from the sideline and is caught here on the last. So they have another crack at them here, the Hornets. Cox, quick hands. Now they float it. Oh, well jammed in from the wing. Shut it down, Balin Mitchell. But they'll get another set here. I have to give a lot of credit there to McElwaith again. He shut down on the passive. He's put the pressure on him. But then his second efforts to cover the inside player when they did get the overlap. Well done to both players. Cox has a little crack, but the touch is made there from Spooner. So the clock is going to beat them here. There's, by my watch, about 40 seconds remaining. Still the margin at three. They'll roll it here. White. Long floating pass. Carlson is on the spot. 
Noah Carlson collects another try. He's had a big tournament. Two in this grand final, 6-4. Gets him back in the game, and I'm sure there's not very long to go now on the clock, but is it too little, too late for the Hunter Western Hornets? The Scorpions aren't in any hurry. There it is. Well, there is the siren. We might get one final play. No, they'll point to the watch instead. And the Scorpions can celebrate. What a series they're having. They are three from three so far with their grand finals. The 12 boys, the 18 boys, and now the 16 boys have all claimed victory. 6-4 at full time. And they might get a chance to make it a nice big sweep of four in a row. Yeah, they could get four in a row. The 18s girls coming up. They've got a tight tussle. And guess who it's between? Scorpions and Hornets again. Well, it's pretty much been the feature of the afternoon. I think it's been the uh, the exact same two sides for the last three matches, including this one you're about to see. The only other one, of course, an all-Sydney affair between the Mets and the Scorpions and the 12 boys. But don't you go too far because up next, our final match for the 2023 Junior Regionals here in Tugra between the 18 girls of the Hunter Western Hornets and the Sydney Scorpions.